Hi everybody, it's Frank here. I wanted to do a quick video about my brand new multifunction laser printer. So I decided finally to retire my good old trusty LaserJet 6L that I bought in the mid 90s. And I made a decision that every 20 to 30 years, whether I needed to or not, I was going to get myself a brand new laser print. And I picked up a brother model HL2280DW multifunction. And this is a laser printer that has scanning, copying. It also has not only USB, but it has a LAN input and wireless built in too. It's a very cool printer and I do recommend it for people. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the drivers and everything for that in a good way that I found to do it in both Windows 8.1 and also in Linux Mint. And Linux Mint I found to be a little bit troublesome for the install of the drivers for this particular printer because it doesn't just immediately recognize it like it did with my old HP printer. So I'm going to show you a, a fairly easy way to set that up and install it and get it all working. And let's get right to it. And first off, I'm going to start with Windows 8 install. And this install is basically the same exact thing you would do a Windows 7. So here we go. All right, now to install the drivers on Windows 8, basically just Put in the uh, driver disk that came with the printer, drivers and utilities disk, and wait for that to come up here. And there it goes. Just click on that and select Run Start EXE. And select your language. And then click on Initial Installation. And what I do and recommend is and do this second one here, MFL Pro Suite without paper port. The paper port software is something you don't need. And what it'll do if you install it is it'll periodically throw up pop up messages trying to get you to buy stuff. So I consider that spamware. So don't install it, you don't need it. Select that one. Say yes to the UAC and hurry up and wait. And let's let it uh, install here. Accept the license. And on this computer, I'm uh, hooking this up via USB cable. Just a note here, you can have one of your computers hooked up to this with a USB cable and all your other computers hooked up with an ethernet connection, which is what I do. This particular computer doesn't have a network hookup for it by choice. And all my other ones, I just use a hardwired connection and it works very well. You can use both at the same time like that. It's not a problem. Now what I'm going to do here is click on custom install and I'll show you why in a second. Click next. Just accept the defaults for the uh, files and folders and such. Now on here, the reason I click custom is I don't want to install this control center four. So I'll uncheck that. It's more software you don't need. Just don't install it. Click next. And more hurry up and wait here. More hurry up and wait. And you can click on here to go to their website, view the manuals. You don't really need to. The manuals are on PDF on that disk anyways. But if you want to, you can click on that. I just click Next. And the registration I never do, so I just click Next. And here's another one. I don't have this status monitor going on startup that's just needless software that's running on your machine to, yeah i just unchecked that you don't want it leave this check to, to set this printer as your default printer which i want if you have multiple printers and you have a different printer already set up as your default and you want to leave it that way this just uncheck this box and it'll install the drivers but not make it your default printer click next and basically just tell it to restart your computer now and once it restarts you are set and now a quick word about toner 
In laser printers, generally speaking, when the toner starts getting low, it'll start leaving kind of gray areas or real light printing in certain areas on the page. The thing to do at that point is pull the toner cartridge out and just kind of gently rock it side to side in your hand a little bit and then put it back in. And usually that gives you a fair bit of extra time on the toner until you have to really replace it. It corrects that light printing on the sides or middle or wherever it is and gives you some extra lifetime. So I always do that. Now on this printer, as the toner starts getting a little low, it's going to first show you a toner low message, but continue to print. And this, I believe, happens at a predetermined page count. It's not really detecting that the toner is low, in my opinion. But soon after that, by default, it'll show a replace toner message and actually stop printing. Again, I think this is just a predetermined page count. And there's nothing wrong with the toner cartridge at this point, And there's probably quite a bit of life left in it. What you want to do is change the default behavior to allow you to keep printing after it comes up with that replace toner message. And what it'll do at that point is it'll just keep printing until the toner cartridge is actually physically low or empty, at which point the printer is going to show a toner ended message and then it'll stop printing. That's when you really need to replace that cartridge. By changing this default behavior, you can often get hundreds of good extra prints before you need to replace that cartridge. And now I'm going to show you how to change that. And the way to do that is this. Press the Menu button, choose the General Setup menu, and then press OK. And now press the up and down arrows to choose Replace Toner, and press OK. And now press the up and down to choose Continue or Stop. And what you want to do is select Continue, and then press OK and then press the stop exit button and then you're going to be set. It won't bother you with that message. And then just like I said, as the, as the toner starts getting low, it'll start printing a little bit light in areas and then just take it out and give it a little rock back and forth. But you don't really need to replace the toner cartridge when it comes up with that message. It's just the waste of toner. So I just turn that message off and give it a watch until it starts printing a little bit light. And that's kind of a good way to save some money on toner cartridges with this or other laser printers. So I hope that helps you out a little bit. Okay, now we're going to set this up as a network printer and configure it using Linux Mint. And before we do that, we need to configure the IP address on the printer itself. This is real easy. What you do is you click on the menu button and then you use the up or down arrows and select network. Press OK. Use the up or down arrows to select wired LAN and press OK. And use the up and down arrows to select TCP slash IP and press OK. And once you get there, press the up arrow to get to the change address menu. And then press the, the arrows to get the correct number for the first octet you want. And usually most people have their, their router set up to assign addresses to the computers in the 192.168.0. something range. And what I do is I just set the printer to something, some high number at the end. In my case, I used 192.168.0.40. So what you do is just press the arrow to get the correct number for that first octet, which is 192 in my case. And then once you have that set, press the OK button and it'll skip over to the next one. And then just keep repeating that until you have the correct address in there. And when they're all set and you press OK for the last time, you should get a little message that says accepted and then it goes back to the IP address selection. That's it, you're done. Just press the stop exit button to get out of the menus and you're all set. We're ready to start setting up the drivers in Linux Mint for a network connection. Okay everybody, now we're ready to install the driver on Linux Mint machine here. And this version is, I think version 14, it's a, it's a version or so old. Uh, this I've tested this steps on the very latest version. It's the same. It's no problem. So what we're going to do first is go to the Brother website and get the installer package. And the website address for that I'll put in the show notes, but it is support.brother.com 
forward slash G as in George, forward slash B as in brother. And then select USA, select United States, English, click on downloads. And then down here you want to select monochrome laser fax MFC DCP category. And this printer is part of the HL2 series, so just clicked on, click on HL2 series. And select the operating system family, which will be Linux. And then select the OS version. And Linux uh, Mint and Ubuntu and others use the Debian version. So click on Linux Deb. And then search. And what we want to click on here is the Linux BR printer installer and just scroll down here agree to the license and then just save that file and this screen also has the install instructions are basically the same thing I'm gonna show you here so you can go ahead and close that and now just locate that file and what I do is I just move it to the desktop and the reason I do that is it makes it just a little easier to find things and see what it's doing. You'll see why when it's done here because it's going to create a whole bunch of junk you don't need on there and you can just delete it. So now that we have that on the desktop, notice that the file has a .gz on the end of it. That just means that it's a zipped or a compressed file and what we're going to do is open up the uh, console window here and we're going to unzip that file first so that we can install it. The first thing we want to do is just change the directory CD and then type in desktop and remember in Linux case matters here so the D in desktop is an uppercase letter if you type it all lowercase it won't know where you're talking about so just change that directory to desktop and hit enter you'll see the desktop line show there and now what I do is I just type dir for directory and it'll list out all the files in that directory and the only file on the desktop is this one that we just put here and the reason I do this is because it lets me see the exact name spelling of that file without having to go back and forth to the file itself on the desktop and first thing we're going to do is unzip this file and to do that you just type G as in George unzip all one word and then type that file name exactly as it's shown right above you there and hit enter and that'll unzip that file and you'll notice on the desktop that icon will change it'll, it'll show an unzipped or unpackaged file now and now we're gonna install this thing and to do that you need admin privileges and the way to get that is to type the word sudo s-u-d-o that stands for super user do and then bash b-a-s-h space and then put the type the name of that file without the dot gz on the end because that doesn't exist anymore and just hit enter and now it's gonna ask you for your super user do password and just type that in and now it's going to ask you to input the model that you want to call this thing and I just type uh, HL2280DW for this printer hit enter and now it's going to ask you yes no just type Y and hit enter it may ask you that a bunch of times now depending on how updated your system is this may take a while this may take five ten minutes depending on how busy the servers are and how much other stuff it has to download it's kind of amazing all the junk it it does here so be patient with it if it looks like it's stopped or if you get error messages along the way just just let it keep going and it'll kind of periodically ask you if you want to install other stuff here or say yes or no just say yes to everything and now when it gets to this point it's going to ask you to specify the device communication and what you want to do is find a line that says specify IP address and in this case it's line 13 so just type 13 and hit enter and then it's going to have you type in that IP address and in my case I set up the IP address on the printer to 192.168.0.40 just type that in and test print say yes 
when it's done it's going to send a test print for us to confirm everything and basically after this you just kind of hurry up and wait a little bit and just say yes when it wants to and so forth and so on it's going to download even more stuff here and it wants you to agree to all this good stuff whatever it is I don't read it and it should be done here shortly and it'll print out a test sheet and at that point, you are done, with one exception. Now look at all this junk it's put all over here. And this is kind of why I do this on the desktop, so I can see all this stuff and just get rid of it. It's just clutter. The only thing you might need this stuff for is if you want to uninstall it at some point later. And there's ways of doing that without having to have all this stuff. So just select all of it and delete it. Done. Your printer is installed in Linux Mint. And I hope this video has helped you out. It took me a little while to get the best method to install that for Linux. It all works. Even the scanning and everything works. It's all set in there. Just go into your application that you want to scan from and select scan and it'll be there and you'll be good. And that's it for this little video tutorial. I hope this helps you out and I thank you for watching.